Welcome to today's video, where I'm going to be walking you through the setup of the Celestron Travel Scope 70. So if you are considering this portable refractor telescope, or perhaps you've just got one, then this video could very well be for you. I'm literally going to be getting all of the pieces out and showing you step by step uh, in video format everything that you need to do and some tips and suggestions along the way. And if you're new to the channel, I would strongly recommend that you hit the subscribe and bell button so that you will be notified of when I release new videos just like this, along with my own telescope reviews and binoculars reviews. So if you're getting into the, into the hobby of astronomy, then these videos will be of interest. As you can see, I've got all of the different components and instruments in front of me here. And you'll also notice I've got some of the packaging. Now, here's a quick tip for you. I'd actually recommend that you keep this and put these different components back into them um, just for added protection. With optics, especially with a kind of a travel scope, um, the, the kind of more protection you can have for it, the better. It will keep it in better condition and protect those optics. Of course, you do get the travel bag um, and that is padded. It's great for that. But I just find putting these back in here really quick and easy. And as you can see, it's kind of bubble wrap as well. So just that added protection. Something you don't have to do, but something I would recommend. Now, the first thing that we need to do is to set up the tripod. Now, you'll be really, really pleased to hear that Celestron have made this really easy for us. And that's because it does come pre-assembled. So to set it up is very, very, all you need to do, it's very simple, all you need to do is, as you can see here, you've got different clips on each of the tripod legs. Tripod meaning, or tri meaning three. So there's three legs that we need to kind of set up here. Um, you've got the three clips as well. So all you need to do basically is undo them. And then you just need to set up the tripod legs to a height of your preference. Now, I believe at the kind of shortest end of the spectrum, kind of the lowest level of the height is around 16 inches. Um, so just bear that in mind. Um, and one thing you are going to need to do as well, so I'm unclipping these and I'm pulling them out. One thing you need to do as well is make sure it's consistent. You obviously want a very sturdy base. Uh, so you want to make sure that whatever height you select for one leg is kind of matched with the other. So as you can see here, basically undo all three clips on each three legs. So you've got nine clips to undo in total. Pull that out and you should hear it. I don't know if you heard that, a slight click. And just, you know, give it an extra, sorry, hopefully you can see that, an extra tug on each component here. So they've got kind of two components to each leg just to make sure it's fully extended. So I've done that. And then what you need to do from this moment is just kind of bring this out here and push this down. And you'll notice uh, that it starts to, if you leave it on the legs, it starts to kind of collapse. So at this point, you just need to lock these back in. So make sure they're fully extended. I'll show you that on camera. Hopefully you can see that. So we've done that on that leg and just work through all three legs. Very simple stuff. Make sure that's fully out at the bottom there. And then the last leg. So we've got that, and I believe I actually forgot that one there. That was really daft, but we got there in the end. So we're out on all three legs. And now if I stand up, make sure it's completely uh, set up properly, you should see, here we go, our tripod is now in place. But this fully extended height is around 49 inches. Now, one quick thing I'd recommend that you do is just go around and make sure that all of these clamps are firmly locked in before you do anything else. You do want to make this is sure this is secure and you can even put a bit of pressure on here, not too much, but a little bit of pressure and push into the ground just to make sure it's evenly, the weight is evenly dis distributed among the tripod. At this point, we need to add the optical tube, which I've now got in front of me. So to do this is actually relatively simple. So the first thing that I would suggest that you do is just kind of turn the tripod, so hopefully you can see that, so that this particular kind of the mount part of the tripod is facing toward you. At this point, you will see this kind of large lever here. Hopefully you can see that. And what you want to do is turn this anti-clockwise and that will release this at the top. So if, if you don't, if you have that kind of secure, this will be firmly in place. So anti-clockwise, and that releases this kind of mechanism. At this point, you can kind of tighten this up. I'd recommend that you do that just to kind of get that in. Yeah, this is now locked in position at the top. Now you'll see at the top of this, there's a, kind of, a, a tiny little screw. I don't know if you can see the kind of edges of that screw. 
On the bottom of the optical tube, you'll notice there are two threaded uh, holes. Now you can actually put, you, you're essentially what we're doing now is we're screwing this optical tube into this screw and you can use either one. It doesn't actually matter. Celestron, the manufacturer, recommend that you can use either or. So bear that in mind. So all you need to do at this point is with one hand have your optical tube and you get an idea here of the travel scope optical tube size and then kind of line it up. It's kind of useful to tilt this up here if you see what I'm if you see what I'm doing. And then from here you let's go with the back one for now. And then you're basically just screwing it round. So this is, can be a little bit fiddly. You'll notice this is on a bit of a lever. You, you, there's a lever here which can help as well. So if you bring this all the way back and then so bring this all the way back and then start to screw in and it will start getting really kind of tough to do and that you'll see now that, that that's kind of locked in place so I screwed that on really really tight and you can keep going and that just keeps it in place and I've literally just put the optical tube just back on the top to keep it protected. At this point I just want to show you how to kind of operate the alt azimuth mount. So if you're not aware what that means, it basically means that this telescope has a point and shoot. So you literally move it around the sky or whatever you're looking at, whether it's wildlife, to where you want to view. So to do that, you need to basically change um, two different things. So the first thing is this, what we kind of were using earlier, this uh, lever. So you want to unscrew that anti-clockwise and that allows you to point the telescope up and down okay and when you've say found your position you then want to screw that in and that's now locked in place okay now to move it say left and right you need to manipulate this little knob here so again that's anti-clockwise and that will allow you to move it left and right and if I secure that in that's a clockwise screw. Now you'll notice I've locked both of these in. Now this telescope won't, well, sorry, the optical tube will not move up or down because we've got both this lever and this lever locked in. I'd now like to show you how to install the diagonal. Now this is essentially what we put the eyepieces in and it's an important piece of equipment because it helps divert the light at a right angle to the light path of the telescope. Now what that essentially means is this allows you to observe in a position that is far more comfortable than if you had to kind of look through this without it. Now it's an erect diagonal which essentially means that the image will be the right side up. So in some optics you have a kind of, it's, it's literally upside down, but this helps to prevent that and make sure that you're viewing um, the image or whatever you're looking at the right way round. Now to install this is really, really easy. All you need to do is you need to firstly take off all of the caps. So take this cap off here. It should come off quite easily and make sure you look after these. Be careful because if you lose them, then you know, you're losing the protection of your telescope. So you take that one off first. Now you want to take them off of the diagonal. So to do that, just literally slowly prise them off and keep them here for safekeeping. You've got one on each end. Now what you need to do, so I'd actually recommend you unscrew this lever and point this up. And I'm gonna tighten it here to get it into position. At this point, you basically want to unscrew these little screws. And again, don't thread them too far because you don't want to lose these because these are what lock the diagonal in place and the eyepiece for that matter. So you'll see here, it's an anti-clockwise and that just opens it up. So you'll see it kind of protrudes through naturally when it's locked in. So, and as it arrives, it will kind of appear like that. And you want to leave, when you've taken this all out at the end, you want to leave them kind of screwed in as well. You don't want these to be loose, but you do need to loosen them up to put the diagonal in. So you unscrew those and then you want to use that Well, you want to put the chrome part into this area, okay? So slowly put that in, and then we want to lock this by screwing these clockwise. So you do both of those, this one on the underside here. It's a clockwise motion, and now the diagonal is firmly in place. I'm now going to show you how to install one of the eyepieces. So this is in its protective case. Um, all you need to do, if I stand over it, again, we need to unscrew this. 
which is keep will keep the eyepiece in position. And then take your eyepiece out of its case. And I've got some kind of that's quite so that come that I'm trying to unscrew it, that pulls off like that. Um, and then I'm going to take this out, be careful of it. So what one have we got here? Um, this is the 20 mil. And then you basically put the chrome part in the top here. Okay, be really careful and make sure that's fully screwed out and it will slot in. Hope, hopefully you heard that and saw that, that chrome slotting in. And then you want to essentially screw clockwise to, to get that eyepiece firmly in place. If you wanted to switch these at any point, unscrew this anti-clockwise, take this out, put the new eyepiece in, screw it back in. Very easy to get in and out. Very, very easy, like this and down like that. Now I would like to show you how to install the Finoscope. Again, they come with protective caps. I would take them off first. And what we want to do here, I'm just gonna put those in my pocket, by the way, look after these. So what you want to do here is, if we look over at the optical tube, you'll see these two kind of nuts here. We want to completely take those off. Again, be very careful. So if you're outside, with a travel scope, you likely may be outside when you're doing this, so just be careful if it's windy uh, and be very mindful of where you put everything. Uh, you, that's one of the reasons why I'd suggest keeping uh, the packaging down the bottom. One of them is actually a bag and you can put all this in um, as you're doing this because, yeah, you just need to be mindful of what you're doing and keeping all these things. But yeah, anti-clockwise to take these nuts off. And once you've done so, you'll be left with these two little kind of spikes, if you like. Well, that goes a long way. And then you basically want to place your finder scope. You'll notice on the finder scope, there's two little holes, equal size. You want to place it with the larger side, the larger end of the finder scope. So one of them's got almost an eyepiece end to it. Larger facing out or towards the end of the optical tube. So put that uh, like that. Make sure it's firmly in position and aligned to the optical tube. It, will, it should rest, it's the same kind of curve and it should rest nicely on there. And then you essentially need to put these back on. Make sure they're lined up properly. So let me just try this with this angle. And I drop one, that is gonna happen, unfortunately. And if you're outside, you have gotta be very careful. So hold that and then just you wanna screw this down. You don't have to go all the way. And I'm not, probably not going to in this video, but I would, yeah, I'd make sure they're firmly in place. Actually, I'm gonna keep going. You wanna keep this nice and secure. Now, I need to find this. And we just need to do the same um, on the under bit here. And that will lock the finder scope in place. And if you did, I don't know if you saw that, I did that quite quickly. Sometimes you get a bit of traction, and it's, sometimes the second one's easier. But we just keep, keep um, it's an anti-clockwise screwing motion. You want this finer scope nice and secure to the optical tube. And that will allow, now, now the finer scope is in place, okay? I'd just like to briefly touch on how you can align the finer scope. To do this is relatively simple. You just need to close one eye and look through the finer scope eyepiece here. Um, you then simply need to just adjust. So you want to locate something, I'd recommend doing this uh, uh, terrestrial level, so maybe, you know, a bird or something like that. Look down here, make sure you get that bird in the center, and then you want to adjust this finder scope by just moving this anti-clockwise or clockwise, and you should find that, that that bird, in the example I've given, should come into focus. You do also need to manipulate these screws here to help get your crosshairs correct as well. So it does take a little bit of adjustment here, um, but you will get um, you will get there quite quickly. You just need to essentially be looking through this finder scope and adjusting these uh, screws to get the crosshairs. And then as I said previously, this to get the, um, to ensure that the, what you're looking at comes into focus. So that's how to set up the Celestron 70 travel scope. That's every step you need to take. It's fully ready to use and you are now ready to observe. Now I do just want to quickly touch on uh, the, you know, the deassembly of this. It's everything in reverse. So the first thing you need to do is take the finder scope off, make sure you kind of get your nuts uh, firmly in place after you've, you've done that. You don't want these to come off when you've kind of deconstructed. Then it's your 
uh, eyepiece, then it's your diagonal, then it's removing the optical tube from the tripod, and then it's closing the tripod legs. So relatively straightforward. Trust me, it may be a little bit complex now, but the more you do this, the easier it will get. So if you have any questions about this, whether it's the telescope itself, its quality, what you can see, or the assembly, or any questions on the components, then do drop a comment down below, I'll get back to you. And do consider subscribing to the channel if you're interested in astronomy or terrestrial viewing, and, and maybe you're looking at telescopes or binoculars or just optics in general to observe. So um, then there's lots of content that's gonna be coming on this channel about, yeah, getting the most out of the hobby and just making sure you've got everything you need from a, from a telescope or binoculars perspective. So with all that said, all the best, and I hope you have an excellent day.